Welcome back to another episode of the Field of 68's 2023 NBA Draft Prospect Profiles. My name is Rob Dosser. I have with me today Coach Matt McCall, and we're going to be breaking down one of the stars of the 2023 NCAA Tournament, Marquise Noel, a guy that had 20 points, 19 assists, and five steals in an overtime win over Michigan State in the Sweet 16. He was absolutely electric in March. He finished the season averaging 18 points, eight assists, three and a half boards, while shooting 36% from three matt i know how much you love this dude here's the problem he is 5'8 160 pounds and that's what he's listed at i don't even think that that's right he probably got the bonus of an extra two inches just from that listing can you draft a guy that is five foot eight and 160 pounds soaking wet to play point guard in the nba i, I don't know rob if he gets drafted you know there's just so few picks in an nba draft i i think it's going to be very very uh, let's say challenging for him to get drafted for, or for a team to take him with one of their picks or two or the, whatever, however many picks they have. A lot of, some teams only have one pick. Some teams have no picks, right? But there's only 60 picks in an NBA draft, throw in there overtime elite guys, throw in there overseas guys, college guys. It's just, it's tough. It's tough to take a guy uh, that's five, eight, 160 pounds. With that being said, I think he ends up on a roster next season because what's going to happen is is in free agency, he's going to sign with the team. He's going to go play summer league. He's going to perform in summer league. And we're talking about a guy that scored over 2,000 points from his career and shot 35% from three, not to mention set a single season record for Kansas State in assists with 297 in one season. He's going to be on a team. And what's going to happen when he gets on his team? Superstars are going to love him. They're going to love him. They're going to root for him. He's going to ultimately, in my opinion, get to a point where he's going to have to make a decision. Is he going to bounce from the G League up to the senior team? How's that going to go? Or is he going to go overseas and have an unbelievable career and make tons of money? But when he gets on an NBA team, the guys on that team, the vets, they're going to love him. They're going to love him. Think of Chris Chioza at the university, from the University of Florida. Chris was a guy, I think he went undrafted. He gets on a team. He bounces around a little bit for the G League, and then he gets on the Golden State Warriors as a part of the, of the world championship with the Warriors last season. Superstars loved him. They rooted for him because he can pass. He can play. He's got feel. He's smaller, but it's exciting to watch. That, to me, is what Marquise Noel is going to be like. He's going to be like a Chioza that the veterans are going to root for, but ultimately he's going to have to come to a decision. Am I going to continue with this? Am I going to be in the G League? maybe get a shot every now and then on a two-way or a 10-day or how is it going to be, or I'm going to go overseas and have an elite-level career and make tons of money. So I say this as someone that loves loves Marquise Noel, loves watching him play, loves his story. I think he's probably an overseas guy. And the reason I say that is I don't know how effective he is when he's not someone that you can you run everything through, right? Like I think he needs the ball in his hands. He needs a chance to – to score, he needs a chance to be able to create. You need to put him into ball screens. Like you're not playing him off the ball. He's not a three and D guy. He's five foot seven, um, and I don't think that he is quite good enough to do what he wants to be able to do at the NBA level. He's one of these guys that I think probably like caps out in the United States as a summer league superstar, a guy that puts up crazy numbers in the G League, but can never quite translate that to more than like a call up here, a two way there, a 10 day here, a cup of coffee there. Um, but I think that like you go abroad and you play in some of these smaller leagues, he's good enough to be able to make a lot of money playing in these other places. Like look at what Russ Smith did when he went to China, he averaged over 60 points a game, literally over 60 points a game and made enough money that he was able to come back here and just start his own bourbon company and do whatever he wants. Like he's never going to have to work again. Over there guarding him? Who's guarding him over there? Was it me? 60 points a game. Doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. Like if you're if if you're good enough and you're an American over there, they just kind of get out of your way and let you go in some of those leagues. And I think Marquise Noel is a guy that can he might be able to make seven. Like I know that they'll pay seven figures in some of those teams in Asia. So um I I yeah, think that he probably I is a I, I think offensively, I, I think his game because of his scoring ability, because of his field, because of his ability to play and pick and roll, I don't worry about him on the offensive end of the floor. I mean, he's smaller, but I really don't, I worry about the other end of the floor. Mm-hmm. 
because it's switching one through five. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional basis for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks. If it's not switching one through five, it's switching one through four. And the size of Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, these bit Jimmy Butler, I don't know, I just named, you know, three of the best guards in the NBA, but the size of those guys, they're going to just catch face up and shoot over them. Like to me, that's the biggest issue. Devin Booker what- is not considered a big guard, and Devin Booker is eight inches taller than Marquise Noel. Here, here's a, here's a, and, and I think Marquise is a way better scorer and a better player. Tyler Eulis. Tyler Eulis got drafted. He was so small, but you never really ever heard about him having an NBA career because of that. Now he's on Kentucky's bench starting his coaching career. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, I think he's going to have a decision to make on, am I going to stick with the G League, the two ways, the 10 days, trying to make it, or am I going to go overseas and make a ton of money? And if he does that, I'll be the first call to get him on our TBT team to play for a million bucks on ESPN. <laughs> yeah, I forgot you were doing that. Um, the, here's to that point. Marquise Noel had a run of games where he scored 65 points and had 20 assists in back-to-back games, like combined in back-to-back games. The only other two guys to do that in college basketball history, do you know who they were? I've told you this stat before. I'm going to say Jason Kidd and Magic Johnson. Trey Young and John ja Morant, right? John ja Morant is a little bit of a different story because I think that John ja Morant is a little bit of a different uh, kind of a player. But I look at Marquise Noel and Trey Young as like really similar in kind of what they do offensively, right? Lots of deep threes, tons of ball screens, can make all the reads out of it. Um, maybe a little bit too flashy for their own good. Maybe shoot too deep a couple of times. But like at the end of the day, like they're you put them in ball screens, you space the floor, and you just kind of trust them. The ridiculous stuff that they're going to do, it's probably going to work out the majority of the time, right? Trey Young is a liability defensively, right? He is the guy that you pick on. He is the guy that you go say, all right, we're going to try to find a switch and we try to get our guy isolated on Trey Young. The concern that everybody has with Trey, despite all the numbers that he puts up, the reason why he's not this superstar winning playoff games, kink hard. That's a concern everybody has with him. That's why he's not the same tier as some of the best players in the NBA that he averages more points than. He's also four inches than, taller than Marquise Noel, and he's 40 that's pounds that's heavier. That's right. That's what I was about to say. But don't ever sleep on those New York guards, man. They find a way. No. They find a way. They, they find this. a way. He's got this right here. He's got yeah. this right here. No question. No. Yeah. But, I mean, he's just, just the numbers in the 33 games with over 20 points, six games over 30. I'm telling you, he's going to be on a roster next year. And the vets, the superstars, they're going to love him and they're going to root for him. But at the end of the day, it's coming down to this. And if he can make more of this doing it over his pond, he's got to do that for him and his family. Uh, yep. Either way, he's going to be p- playing basketball for a long, long time. And, you know, honestly, having, having been able to talk with him a couple times uh, this past season, I would not be surprised if he's that dude at 55 years old when you're just uh, kind of driving through New York and you go see someone playing, picking up over there, and you got the guy with the Uncle Drew gray beard hooping. 
That's going to be Marquise Noel. That dude is never going to stop playing. He's just a basketball player. Listen, Matt, this was fun. Marquise Noel, I know we're both going to be rooting for him. A March Madness starlet, uh, and hopefully that will uh, leverage him into an NBA contract. This has been fun. This is the final NBA draft prospect profile that we are recording. So if you are watching this, make sure you go check out our live mock draft a week before the NBA draft and come tune in for a second screen experience while the draft is going on. We'll be live breaking it down on the Field of 68 YouTube channel. So for Coach Matt McCall, my name is Rob Doster. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.